Okay, so on this podcast, we're going to try a bunch of problems where we're trying to figure out the cell potential and drawing um, galvanic cells. One of the important things to, um, which is a little seems a little strange at first, is that when we are balancing the redox reaction, uh, sometimes we have to multiply to get the electrons to balance. Um, but we do not change the amount of voltage if we change the the coefficient on the balance equation. And uh, we'll see that in the next problem, but I wanted to just point it out. And the reason why we don't is because one volt is equal to one joule per one coulomb. And if you remember, a coulomb is the charge on an electron. So if I have something that has, let's say, two electrons, and once something's gaining two electrons, something's losing three electrons, and I go ahead and I multiply this equation by two and this by three to make the electrons equal, then I'm, I'm multiplying the number of electrons, but at the same time, I would also be multiplying the number of joules. So I'm changing them both by a factor of two or a factor of three, so the number of volts does not change. Now the number of electrons, in this case it would be six electrons lost or gained, is important when we get to the next section. So it's still a good idea to, to figure out how many electrons are in total are being lost or gained. But when we're figuring out the cell potentials, the E0 for the cell, we are not multiplying times the stoichiometry. Okay. All right, so we're going to start by considering a galvanic cell based on aluminum and magnesium metals at standard conditions. We want to write the half reactions. Um, the full balance reaction, calculate E0, and draw and label the cell. And we're going to assume that potassium nitrate is in the salt bridge. And we'll always just assume that, even if I don't say it. All right, so I went ahead and, and gave myself this little picture of a cell, and I would suggest that you pause and go ahead and do that yourself. Okay, so all I know is that aluminum and magnesium are involved. So I'm going to start off by writing the half reactions. I'm going to look at my... Um, standard reduction potential chart and what I know is Al plus 3 plus 3 electrons is going to give me Al and that is an E naught of negative 1.66 volts and I do the same thing with magnesium I find that on my cell potential chart and I get a reduction potential chart and I get I get this and that E naught is 2.37 to the negative. Okay, so um, what I want is the largest cell potential, and that is going to be the least negative of the two here. So aluminum 3 plus is going to uh, stay as aluminum 3 plus. I'm going to write that just as it shows on my sheet, and I'm going to reverse the reaction for magnesium. So that's going to become magnesium plus two plus two electrons. And when I do that, this was minus 1.66. When I do this, this becomes a positive 2.37. These are volts. So my cell potential, E naught, is equal to, I add these together, and I get 0 0.71 volts. Okay, now I do want to, I have to write the balance equation, so I have three electrons being gained here and two being lost, so I'm going to have to multiply this equation by two, and multiply this equation by three, and when I do that, I get two Al3+, plus, and I'm going to have six electrons, right? So it's important for me to remember n equals six, not for this problem, but um, in the next section we'll start using this number. So it's good to record it in the margin or something because you're going to need it when you get to more complex problems. Okay, and I'm going to end up with 3 magnesium, and that is going to give me 2 aluminum plus 3 mg plus 2, and the electrons loss and gain will be, uh, will cancel out. Okay. Now because I am, my charge is going down here, this is my reduction, and this is going to be my oxidation. Loss of electrons is oxidation. Okay, and I remember my mnemonic, so anox, this is going to be my, happen at my anode, 
in red cat. This is going to happen at my cathode. And it doesn't matter. I mean, there's no convention that says this is cathode and this is anode, or this is anode and this is cathode. And you have to be careful of that when you're looking at a cell. You have to look at um, where the oxidation is going on and where the reduction is going on. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this aluminum. And I'm going to call this magnesium. And because magnesium is occurring in the anode, I'm going to call this my anode. And my aluminum is going to be my cathode. Now one other thing that helps when we're doing electrochemical cells is that if I look at the word cathode, there's a positive sign in here. So my cathode is positive and my anode is negative in the case of a spontaneous electrochemical cell. Okay, and if I'm talking about a galvanic cell, it is always spontaneous. If I don't get a positive E naught, then I've done something wrong or I've constructed a cell that just won't work. Okay, so here's my cathode. So I'm going to have um, aluminum plus threes down here. I'm going to have one molar solution of them. And I'm going to have magnesium plus twos down here. And we're going to think about which way the direction is going to go. And remember, fat cat, fat cat, from anode to cathode. So I'm going to go from the anode to the cathode with my electrons. And my voltage is going to read as 0 0.71. Alright, now I have potassium nitrate in my salt bridge, so I have to think about what's going to go where. So if my aluminum is losing electrons and going up to become an Oops, if my magnesium is losing electrons and sending them up here, then my magnesium is becoming a plus two, and I am going to need to send nitrates into the magnesium side to neutralize these, these positive ions that are being formed so that the electrons will continue to go up this way. And if that's happening, then I'm going to need my K pluses to go this way because my electrons are coming down. They're combining with the Al plus 3 to become aluminum metal. Remember this is this is going to get bigger. This will get smaller as my magnesium gets used up and becomes ions. So my K plus is going to come down this way to help balance that charge. Okay, as I use up the plus 3s and they become aluminums. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. All right, here we have a galvanic cell based on this reaction. And you won't find these reduction potentials on your table that I gave you, but you, if you're given something like this, you will be given the half reactions in their cell potentials. So that's what we have, okay? So well, we're given these half reactions, and what i got to look at is which one do I have to flip? Because here we have M MnO4 going to Mn plus 2, so this one looks good. I'm going to keep that one the way it is. And my ClO4 is on the other side, so I'm going to need to flip that one. So I'm going to go ClO3 minus plus H2O becomes ClO4 minus plus 2H plus plus 2 electrons. And when I do that, I'm going to change that charge. I'm going to cancel this out. And this will become minus 1.19. And that will mean that my E naught is going to be um, 1.51 volts. Minus 1.14 volts is going to be 0.32 volts. Okay. Now I still have to balance the equation. I have so I have five electrons up here, and I have two electrons down here. So I'm going to need to multiply this equation times five, this equation times two. Okay. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with 2MnO4 minus plus 16H pluses plus 10 electrons, right? We've identified N equals 10, right? We'll need that later. And that will become 2MnN plus 2 plus 8 waters. My other reaction is going to become 5ClO3 minus 
plus five waters become five ClO4s plus 10 hydrogens, whoops, hydrogen plus, plus 10 electrons. Okay, and let's cancel stuff out. Let me just change the color of my pen and change my ink color. I'm gonna make it Blue. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out my electrons. They're the same on both sides. I have 16 H pluses there and 10 here, so these are going to go away, and I'm going to make this just 6. And I have 5 waters here and 3 here, so I'll get rid of these 5, and this will become a 3. So now I can rewrite, and I got 2 MnO4 minus plus 6 H plus plus 5 ClO3 minus becomes 2 M n plus 2 plus 3 H2O's plus 5 ClO4 minus. And that looks like everything's balanced. Voila, I'm good. All right, so we've got one more to do here. Okay. All right, so here we say we have a gabionic cell involving Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus ions and copper metal. We want to write the complete balance equation and draw and label the galvanic cell. So the first thing I recognize here is that I don't have iron metal anywhere. So what that means is I am not going to have an iron electrode. I need to have an iron metal involved. I'm going from a plus three iron to a plus two iron. So when that happens, I need an inert electrode. And there are two choices for that. One is platinum, which works very well, but is very expensive. And the other is a graphite. So I'm going to go ahead and, and be expensively outrageous and pick platinum for one. I'm going to make the other one copper. Okay. So let's see if I could switch one of these around. So the iron plus three becoming iron plus two is 0.771. So I'm going to switch around my copper. So I'm going to have Fe3 plus plus one electron becomes Fe. 2 plus, and again, this is not on your sheet. And I'm going to switch around my copper to become copper 2 plus, plus, oops, plus 2 electrons, and that's going to be 0.34 volts. And it's going to be negative 0.34 volts. So when I add those together, I'm going to get 0 0.431 volts total. I have one electron here, two electrons here, so I need to double this to figure out the complete balance equation. So I end up with 2Fe3 plus plus copper becomes Fe2 plus plus Cu2 plus. Okay. So let's figure out which one is our reduction and which one is our oxidation. So here, and I'm gonna, here I've got oxidation, right? I'm sorry, I've got reduction because my charge is going down. And here I have oxidation. So oxidation happens at the anode. So this is going to be my anode. And reduction occurs at the cathode. So this is gonna be my cathode. And because there's a T or a plus sign in that, that's going to be my positive electrode, and this will be my negative electrode. Okay, so I'm going to have copper plus two ions down here, and I can draw a few. And um, my electrons go from um, fat cat, from anode to cathode. So my electrons are going this way. My cell potential is 0 0.431. All right, so I got to think about what I have down here. Do I have Fe plus 3 or Fe plus 2? So if my electrons are flowing this way, my electrons are coming up, and they are going to combine with what's ever in the solution to make the other, to make the product, right? So I'm, I'm going to need to have Fe plus 3 in there. 
because it is going to combine with the, the electron coming in here to become Fe plus 2. So what must be in there is Fe plus 3s. Okay, so what I have to figure out now is what's happening with my potassium nitrate. Okay, so if my copper is getting used up Um, and the electrons are going up this way, and this is becoming positive, I'm going to need to send nitrates in there to neutralize that positives, the positives that I'm creating. And therefore, the potassiums will have to go the other way. Okay. Now, there's a couple other really short ones. It is, you know, it's a more typical. You'll see this on a, let's say, a multiple choice that I want to do real quick, and then we will come and conclude. All right, so we want to calculate the EMF for a cell that employs the following overall reaction. If I look up the um, on the standard reduction table, I get I2 plus 2 electrons gives me 2I minus, and that is an E naught of um, 0.53 volts. Aluminum becomes... Um, aluminum plus 3 going to aluminum, this is plus 3 electrons, is minus 0.166, okay? So this, this stays the same. I flip this, I get aluminum becomes aluminum plus 3 plus 3 electrons, and that becomes a plus 1.66 volts. I add these two together and I get 2.20 volts. Okay, I got one more here. All right, so I look up the cadmium voltaic cell based on cadmium plus two and two electrons, and we want to um, identify the half reactions that occur. Okay, so if I look this equation up, this is my E naughts, and this is going to be negative 0 0.40 volts, and this is minus 0.14 volts. So the one that has the most volts will be the one that's least negative, which will be this. So that'll stay the same. Sn2 plus, plus 2 electrons becomes Sn, and that is uh, 0.14 volts. I've got to flip the other. The cadmium becomes cadmium plus 2, plus 2 electrons. I changed the sign because I flipped it and that becomes 0 0.40 volts, and I add them together, and I get 0.26 volts. And it's got to be positive, because this has got to be a, a spontaneous cell. All right, so that's going to do it for us.